And that's coming up shortly, but first a story that's certain to make you mad. Tonight we confront a child sex predator who's now adding insult to injury by using a loophole in the legal system to actually sue his victim. Abused by a pedophile priest in Sydney's West. Indecently and sexually assaulting four young girls. Now let's get real it's scenes we're confronted with it nearly every day. For many of us, it's unpleasant to fathom. You will not be exposed to anything uncomfortable in this story tonight, but you will be gobsmacked by the new legal twist involving this insidious evil. You've been sitting outside and you've been tailing me. So be it, I admit, okay. guilty, Your Honour. But I tell you what, my guilt is far less than yours, my friend. Hasn't he been hurt enough? Haven't I? Really? I was shocked. I st I'm still shocked. It was the early 1970s, and Blue Mountains Grammar School was not a place to be. Neville Betridge taught geography by day and performed evil at night. Well, I didn't know really what was going on. I, I didn't understand the, yeah, the whole thing, particularly the, another male. Decades later, Betridge would be convicted for the mental and physical sexual torment he carried out on 14-year-old student Mark Worth. He's actually just a disgusting piece of filth. But now, four decades on, the convicted pedophile is suing the victim. Some obscure court rule that has never been used in this context before. The crime that was committed against my client is one of the most sickening you could think of. And now this is like rubbing salt into the wound of my client. Now in his late 50s, denied his childhood innocence, Mark is a loner. Mentally, how did all this affect you? He made life a lot harder for me. I guess I haven't achieved what I should have achieved in life. The dream of being an architect would never eventuate. Just labouring and, and I just blue collar work for, for, for virtually all my life. A predator's actions had a lifelong effect. Well, I didn't understand why I was doing things and I, I was unlike my brothers, I was unlike my, my other school friends. Peter Carp is Mark's friend and lawyer. He was really severely affected by the abuse that occurred when he was just a 14-year-old boy in a boarding school. He came from a very secure, normal home, but after the abuse occurred, he went right off the rails, went into alcoholism as a teenager and into rebellion. His GP eventually sent him off to a psychiatrist and that awful abuse Mark had bottled up for much of his life finally came out. Betteridge admitted to the sexual assaults, was convicted and sentenced by a court. Mark then sought compensation for a life robbed. He brought the proceedings against the Anglican Church, which ran the school, as well as the perpetrator himself. The church didn't dig that deep. They offered uh, to settle it, uh, and, and it was a very, like a pittance, what they've settled it for. But even though Betridge lives in this lovely waterfront complex, his lawyers argued he was a man of little worth. He's got no money, he's got no ability to meet any judgment, so therefore there's no point in continuing the proceedings against him. So with Mark's legal bills mounting and his modest payout dwindling, he stopped the legal proceedings against Betteridge. And then this bill for $10,000 landed on Mark's computer. Soon after, it rose to over $17,000. And today, it's up to... Last I heard was so close to 20000 Incredibly, the convicted pedophile was demanding the victim pay his legal bills. Yes, every phone call, every email or inquiry racked up by Betridge's lawyers was tallied and billed to Mark. 
accounts worth thousands of dollars kept coming in because the law states if you take legal action against someone and then withdraw before the case commences, the other party can make claim upon you. He's still got control over me. He's like he had control over me all those years ago when I was a vulnerable kid, taking me to, from my dormitory to his room and doing his thing with me. Now, with the help of his lawyers, he's still controlling me. Time to confront Neville Betridge, now aged 70. Can I ask Mr Betridge why you would even take this sort of action against him? Hasn't he been hurt enough? Haven't I? Really? How long ago did this happen? It happened in the 1970s. Sadly, we didn't talk about these things in the 70s, 80s, 90s. We talk about them today because we're a more mature society. And today we talk about these issues and finally people are coming out to say their piece. And as much as it, it, it disturbs me to be confronting an older man, I think that you have some responsibilities now that you have to face up to. Yeah, well, I'm going on my lawyer's advice. Does that seem morally right to you? It seems legally right to me. Morally right? Perhaps not. I think it's disgraceful. Mm. No other word for it, absolutely disgraceful. It's like he's attacking him again, isn't it, Shirley? Yes, yes, he is in his own. Yes. For the mother Mark is devoted to, it makes no sense. I love my dad. <laughs> So the 27th Nor his daughter, Maddie. He tries to, like, do the best by me and, like, not let it affect me, but you can just tell, like, it gets him down and it's, like, it's not good. You're unable to pay your lawyers, is that right? You know that. You wouldn't be asking me otherwise. Well, I've got to be honest with you. You live in a lovely apartment block. How do you know? Because I know where you live. Because you've You been drive a, a late Excuse model me. car. Because you've been sitting outside and you've been tailing me. So be it. I admit, you. guilty, Your Honour. But I tell you what, my guilt is far less than yours, my friend. The situation is that, by statute, his time to claim for that money has run out, and run out before he brought all this up a couple of years ago. OK? So therefore, he has no claim. He's not making a claim. You're yes, making the claim on him. He, he just doesn't want to pay your court cost. This is all about punishing him. This is about his predatory stuff. This is about, I'm going to get you back for this. I'm still in control. You know, you can run, but you can't hide sort of thing. Hetty Johnson has seen it all before. She heads Bravehearts, the organisation set up to protect kids from sexual assaults. His whole life has been destroyed because of the action of this fella, and he's still after him. He's an adult and he's still going for him. He's never going to let him go. Pedophilia is a shame upon us as a society, but being re-traumatised again 40 years later by the same man is just unconscionable. There needs to be an amendment made to the legislation such that if you are convicted of an offence, that you don't have this right. Two more former students have now come forward saying they too were allegedly abused by Betridge, while another teacher from the same school is currently in court, charged with abusing students during that period. The matter is, is going through the court at the moment, mm -hmm. as you probably know. I'm not prepared to say anything until it's through the court, at which time I will have plenty to say. If the court dismisses that, will you let it rest there? Yes. And we will be there when this case comes up in court next month. We'll let you know whether Mark Worth finally gets some peace.